Hello, so as you might be able to see, I've had a Flecton helmet cover come, and this one is for my um, sort of police uh, Kevlar helmet. So the idea is that hopefully this cover will fit. Um, this is meant to be the cover that Pasket helmets use. Um, if this is an authentic German one, then it's got numbers in that makes me think it's authentic. Uh, Germany's current helmet is very similar to the Pasket, so um, this should hopefully fit. So. The idea is, I guess, first we just put it on there and do up the drawstrings. Now, this looks like it's going to be a bit bigger than the helmet, which is generally a good thing when it comes to helmet covers, simply because, um, you know, that means you're more likely to get one that actually fits rather than um, trying to stretch a small one over. So let's do up the drawstrings, which is, um, I apologise for, is off frame, but I might have to cut back in a moment once I've done this. So yeah, I'll just cut back uh, and do that. Okay, so the helmet cover is now on, but as you can see there's a lot of overhang because this is obviously, I think, was a very large sized thing. And this is just a medium sized helmet of a similar design. But let's see if this can go on comfortably with the helmet cover on. Looks like it probably can. So just get these straps back where they should be. Get this round there. And yep, yeah, there we go. So, the helmet is on with the helmet cover, but now obviously what I want to do is just tuck this in a bit more there, because that's a bit irritating with that pushing down onto the side of my head, but I'll sort that out later. So, as you can see, I've now got the Flecton cover on this helmet. Now, what I want to do now, um, I'll probably buy an additional scrimlet, I'm just trying to not get the gas mask to hit me on the foot there, um, is as you can see what I did with the Mark 6 helmet, uh, sorry Mark 7 helmet because it's got the Mark 6 cover on it, just an MTP was to wrap around the scrim net through this. So let's get this um, scrim net out of here a moment. Because what we're going to do is a very similar thing where I've not got any hessian for this helmet but what I want to do is um, just get this scrim net out to start with. Actually, tell you what, rather than pulling all this one out, let's do it with the marker. Although, I'll be tempted to actually just buy um, a separate scrim net for this one at some point because I like using the Marpat more as the sniper veil type thing. So, it's going to be that camo pattern on it. So, what I'm going to do is, I'll probably again, best to do this with the helmet off, is pull through this and start threading it through. So, let me cut the camera here, I'll take the helmet off get this pulled through as I want it and then go back, but I said I'm probably going to buy a different um, sort of um, scrim for just this helmet um, so I can get one that I think looks better for the helmet. Obviously another thing you do is when you're in the field you'd start shoving twigs and leaves and things through these bits on the helmet cover uh, to make the actual shape of the helmet far less human-like um, or helmet-like if you wish. Uh, so let's just cut to me now with the scrim in the helmet. Right, this is certainly not perfect. A big part of the problem with the Marpat style um, cover is obviously it's printed on one side. So it's very hard if you're pulling through um, a scrim to get it evenly sticking out. But anyway, let's see how this actually works in practice. Okay, there we go, how it's on. So, as you can see, as usual, I've got my scrim bit that covers the face that you can flip up if you want to, and then you can obviously put that into the thing. The only annoying thing with the helmet cover is a bit of my peripheral vision is now being cut off by that cover. Uh, it's nothing major and too annoying, but um, as I said, I think having a scrim like this one, which is just kind of a plain pattern or one where it's just dyed with several splodges on would probably be the best choice for this. Uh, obviously having the bit that hangs down in front of your face is very important. Um, if you watched the camo test I did recently of the MTP, it was really surprising just how well having that down in front of your face makes it so much harder for you to see because obviously the human face is not obvious in most of the things. As I said, you want this to be sort of tucked away, probably just in there, when not in use this because otherwise it's going to be a bit annoying. Obviously part of the job of the scrim is just that it makes the helmet not look as much helmet shaped which is very good at a distance because it means your silhouette's a bit less obvious. It's the reason the Israelis have that kind of weird floppy uh, thing they put on their helmets because at a distance again that means your um, helmet is nowhere near as obvious because it stops the brain recognizing the sort of silhouette of a human as quickly. 
So there we go, um, a big thanks to Tumbo for recommending me the Flecton covers. I wasn't originally actually planning on necessarily getting the Flecton one, but when I was looking through eBay, um, I spotted a Flecton one, as you know I like the Flecton camo, and it was like you know a very large one with a drawstring, so I thought that's perfect because I don't have to worry that it's going to be too uh, small for the helmet. Especially because, you know, this is a black helmet underneath, which isn't a brilliant colour for um, trying to be hidden as a military helmet, because I guess because it's a police one. I mean, of course, I could have painted the helmet underneath, but I thought if I'm putting a cover on anyway, it doesn't really matter. I'm not too concerned about the black straps, because as I said, if you've got something like that down in front of it, it does the job of hiding it anyway. So, what's next to this helmet? I'll probably take this scrim net off of it now, um, and keep the helmet as it was. And then, obviously, what I'll do after that is... Um, you know, buy a purpose scrim that's double sided essentially, because that's what I need. Uh, maybe if I can get a cheap one, one of the Flectarn scrims, because I'm not sure how much they um, actually cost. Um, but again, it's more like my British olive drab scrim, just um, with a kind of Flecton swatch pattern on it, but both sides. It doesn't look as good as actual Flecton, so you know, it w won't have as much detail as this helmet cover does. But there we go, this helmet cover's fairly good. As I said, it's a bit too large for this helmet, but not so much that it's annoying. Although I suppose I could pull the drawstring even tighter in a bit and sort that out a bit more. But overall, other than a bit of peripheral vision cut off by um, that little bit there above, which isn't the most useful angle to be looking anyway, I'd say this is a fairly good helmet cover. Obviously, as you know, I'm a fan of Flexarn anyway. I think it's a very effective camouflage pattern. And I'm glad this one kind of isn't too dark because some flectons are very dark, but this one's actually, um, you know, kind of just a very bland rust and green sort of splodges on it, which is what you want for um, camouflage. So, there you go. Uh, whether or not I do an update video on this, I don't actually know, unless it's part of a camo test, but as I said, I'll probably now get a, another scrim just for this helmet and tie that all around, but at least now with a cover on, uh, I could put leaves and things in it if I needed to in the field. And it's actually, you know, got a proper camo pattern on it. So it's not a obvious black helmet sticking out. So there we go. Uh, as I said, it's just going to be a bit of fine tuning now, I think, of the drawstrings to get this as comfortably tucked into the helmet as possible.